These are the ingredients you'll need. One onion, hot pepper, habanero, wiri garlic, a couple of cloves, this is a large elephant clove, green onions, scallion, or bandanya, also known as culantro, recao, or shadow benny, very ripe plump tomatoes. You can use anywhere from no tomatoes to two pounds of tomatoes. It's up to you. This is salted smoked heron filet. And here it is, close up. Smoked heron is essentially what the name says. It's heron that has been cleaned, uh, salted and smoked, which gives it that unique, delicious flavor that we all love. In the supermarket, you'll find two types of smoked heron. The one that has been cleaned and filleted like this, or the whole smoked heron with the head and the skin, which is very difficult to clean. So if you want the minimum amount of work, use this type of uh, smoked heron. My cousins in Trinidad, they roast their smoked heron. I'm just gonna show you how that's done. And they roast it prior to cleaning. Just gives it an extra flavor on top of that smokiness. And we'll also burn out some of those fine uh, bones or pickers that we call it. This is just for demonstration purposes. You don't really need to do it, but, but if you wish, this is an, just another option. There are a few types of smoked heron preparations, a smoked heron with the tomatoes, and then you could make a smoked heron choka. So today we're doing the smoked heron with tomatoes. I like using tomatoes because it really balances the, um, the pungent flavor of the smoked heron. So now that I've finished making a proper mess on the stove, we'll get ready to boil the smoked heron. I've placed it in this pot, it's a medium pot. You don't want a pot that's too small or else it will overflow. And I'm gonna fill it with water. We'll cover it with enough water. You can give it a good rinse first to remove that salt at the top. It's crusted with salt and we don't want that saltiness. So be careful with the bones. Rinse, drain. Oops. Fill. And we'll place it on the stove. You could shred it and just rinse it in a strainer, but this is easier. Next we'll rinse again, one last rinse, and then I'll shred it. Word of caution when you're handling pepper, be very careful and use gloves. This pepper was very hot. I think I touched my nose and my, now my nose is burning. So be careful. I'm only going to use probably about half. This is like one third. I already cut out the base and it's two ounces without the base. I'm gonna dice. You would use any amount of garlic, two to six cloves, depending on your preference. You can grate it as well. So I've minced the garlic. All I'm going to do now is get some time for my plant in the living room, and then we'll start cooking. Remove the bigger bones. And just shred it like this. If you like it chunky, leave it chunky. Now we'll get ready to fry it up. Give it a taste just to see how much salt there is. It's not very salty. Just the right amount, I would say. And you could pick off these if you wish. I don't wish to. I will be here for a few years. We'll pick some thyme from the plant. Thyme. Now let's start cooking. I'll place a couple of tablespoons of oil in the pot. Next, I'll add the onion. I have to take off the stove because the oil is very hot. I'll cook it for a few minutes. Just sweat it down, allow it to become translucent. Next, I'll add the garlic and the hot pepper, if I didn't say that before. We'll cook it for one minute. Next, we'll add the shredded smoked heron.
and stir. Smells amazing at this point. You see some of the onions have caramelized there. Flavors are ridiculously good. Let's cook it for one minute. Get a little bit of brown in at the bottom. The Maillard effect. Mmm, tastes good too. So yummy! You can eat it like this with fried bake or coconut bake, but we're continuing. Next I'll add in the chopped tomatoes. Give it a stir. Some lovely fresh thyme. Italian. You can also add pimento pepper here. I don't have any fresh pimento. And I just don't want to go into the freezer right now. Give it a stir. It's on high heat. You could cook this on very low heat if you wish. I added one and a half pounds of the tomatoes just so you could still see the smoked herring and also because I want to send some of this for my mom and aunt. So I want it to stretch a little bit and you do that by adding tomatoes. If you wanted more smoked herring than tomatoes, just decrease the amount of tomatoes you're using. I'm going to cover and allow it to cook about 15 minutes or until all the tomatoes break down and surrenders to the smoked herring. Reduce heat to low and we'll check every five minutes. It's bubbling vigorously. It's beautiful. It smells amazing. It's going to be absolutely delicious. Hi Bixby, show me the timer please. So it's been cooking for about eight minutes now. And as you can see, the very ripe tomatoes have broken down really nicely. We did not have to add any liquid because the tomatoes were ripe enough. We always try to cook with natural juices rather than adding water unless absolutely necessary. You could probably eat it like this, but I wanted to break down a little more. Let's give it about five minutes on very, very low heat. Mm. Delicious. Taste for salt and add now. You can add black pepper if you wish. Mm. Absolutely perfect. So it's been cooking for about 13 minutes now and that's quite enough time. This is it. This is the finished product. This is so delicious. Look at that. Smells phenomenal. You're going to love this, but I do hope you love it as much as we do. I'm going to make some coconut bakes right now. I may film it, so we'll see. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Smoked heron with tomatoes. It's going to be your next favorite thing if you have never tried it before. Take off the stove and you're done. Mm, so good. I made coconut milk using a frozen grated coconut from the freezer section of the supermarket. I'll just strain it to make two cups of coconut milk. We really need one and a half, but I always make a little extra. I'll strain the coconut milk and then we'll start kneading. I'm going to warm the milk a little bit because we're using yeast in this recipe. I'll measure out four cups of flour. That's equivalent to 20 ounces. One pound, four ounces of flour. 565 grams, four cups. I'll add the yeast or baking powder. Two teaspoons, two tablespoons brown sugar, salt, don't put it on the yeast, about a teaspoon. Now I'll mix. Next I'll add the coconut, grated coconut, mix it in. Four tablespoons melted butter, mix that in. Next I'll add the coconut milk, gradually. Squeeze to bring together, roll it around, bring it to the center. Knuckle press and repeat a few times until the dough is smooth. Make a ball. I'm going to brush with a little bit of oil to prevent it from drying at the top. And I'm going to cover and let it rest until it doubles. The dough has been resting for about 20 minutes. I'm going to remove it from the bowl and place it in a tray on parchment paper. 
I'm going to press it out. See all the bits of coconut in there? This has a lot of coconut. Press it out as thick or as thin as you like it. Get the edges. The oven is preheating and I shaped it into a heart. Since Valentine's is around the corner, a few of you may be inspired to make this for your Valentine's Day. I prick it with a fork. I'll let it rest for about 20 minutes while the oven is heating and then we'll place it in the oven and bake for about 20 to 25 minutes. We'll check it after 20 minutes. Here it is, straight out of the oven. It smells absolutely amazing. Let's brush it with butter while it's hot. It's gonna be just perfect. Smoked heron and tomatoes and coconut bake is the ultimate comfort food for me. If you've enjoyed being in the kitchen with me today or learned something new, please like, share, leave a lovely comment below and subscribe if you wish to see more. Until next time, stay safe, be well, cook, share and love. Bye bye.